Hi, and welcome back to our channel, LW Pharmacy School. Tonight, or today, uh, depending on where you are in the world, we are going to cover the practice questions part three. Now, let me be honest with you. This video is going to be short, quick, and to the point, okay? Um, I don't have a lot of time today, and so I'm going to do my best to cover all of what some of my friends have asked for. Most of you have asked for um, institutional questions. Some of you have asked for grains questions. Um, and so I have included that as much as I possibly can. If for any reason you do not see your question here, please know that there are other people in front of you and you will see your question pretty soon, okay? I will try to my best to incorporate them into every video. Uh, remember that every second Monday of the month, we do a free crash course. This upcoming Monday, we are doing a free crash course for all my friends out there, okay? Let me give a quick shout out to all of my friends who have passed their PTCP exam or their EXCPT exam, watching my videos or attending my sessions. Kudos and congratulations to you. You've just embarked upon a new part, a new journey in your life, and I wish you the very best. All of us at LW Pharmacy School are so proud of you, and we know that you will do well in your new setting, okay? Um, if we have helped you on this page, please like, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications, because we want you to stay up to date as we continue to upload information every Wednesday to help you all. So next Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we will host a live lesson, okay? Um, I am going to make sure that I put the link in here in this video description so that way you can attend the live session next Monday. Um, and then on Wednesday, we will upload the video that we record on Monday, okay? So remember, every Wednesday at one o'clock standard time, we always upload a new video to help you with your studies, okay? We're gonna go ahead and get started because I don't really have a lot of time. Um, we have been booked and busy with a lot of different community events as well as helping our friends around the world study. Um, shout out to all my friends in Egypt, my friends in Poland. Uh, I see you, y'all are doing your thing and I am so proud of you. So if you are outside of the United States and, um, oh, I got a new friend from Iraq. Shout out to my new friend from Iraq. I see you. I'm so glad that we're working together. If you are not in the country of the United States of America and you are using this channel and you are watching me and you're taking me everywhere with you all around the world, drop a comment below. I want to know where you are. I want to know where you're from. I want to know what I can do to help you. I truly enjoy you guys coming and being a part uh, of my channel and allowing me to really help you on this journey, okay? Uh, the next question, or the first question rather, is medication dosage form. So it, it talks about the dosage form of um, how it formulates in the stomach, okay? Which dosage form is formulated to dissolve in the intestines rather than the stomach, okay? There is a typo here. This should say is and not us, okay? Humans make mistakes. If a human created it, there is not 100% that there won't be a mistake. So if a human created, you can almost guarantee that somewhere, somehow, there's going to be a mistake somewhere. Um, but again, which dosage form is formulated to dissolve in the intestines rather than the stomach? Is it sublingual, transdermal, enterocoded tablet, or intranasal? Remember that enterocoded tablet bypasses the stomach and it goes to the intestine. I had a friend that asked to see this in Washington, D.C. I hope this is helping you this is your question, okay? Hopefully you're getting this. Uh, but remember, it is always the uh, enteric coated tablet that is going to bypass the stomach and go into the intestines, okay? We're going to the next one. The next question, institutional setting. Shout out to my friend in San Antonio, Texas, who wanted this question. Big state of Texas, great state of Texas. I'm in Texas, so I love it. Uh, which non-governmental agency is responsible for the accreditation of institutional settings? Which non-governmental agency is responsible for the accreditation of institutional settings? Is it AMA, ASHP, JCO, or APHA? Okay, the answer is Joint Commission. The Joint Commission on Accreditations of Healthcare Organization is responsible for institutional settings accreditation, okay? It is not responsible for community or retail setting, okay? Um, but it is responsible for the accreditation of hospitals. So institutional setting would be a hospital. That could be an uh, ambulatory facility. That could be a rehabilitation facility. Any place where a person 
can live or not live, but maybe be a patient where they are actually checked in. Um, not like a hotel, no, but it's going to be where they can actually, um, you know, be checked into the hospital. So remember, people can have an overnight stay at the hospital. People can have an overnight stay at therapy, right? At rehabilitation places, right? So that's what this is about. This isn't about community or retail. This is about institutional where patients are in. So you see institutional in, okay? So when you think about institutional, it's any facility where a patient can spend the night live or, or stay overnight, right? Or stay for a long period of time. So again, this is not a group home. They do not certify or accredit a group home or anything like that. Uh, but it's going to be more so home, uh, home health. It will also be um, any type of ambulatory, you know, facility, rehabilitation, hospital, that sort of thing. This shouldn't be too hard for you all to remember. Dose calculations. Dejoxin is available in, con in a concentration of 0 0.1 milligrams per ml. How many milliliters are required to administer a 75 microgram dose? Remember our answer choices to the left, okay? Now, um, the first thing you wanna, you always wanna remember that whenever you don't see a number in front of an ml, that you automatically assume that that number is one. One, one, one. One, 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 okay? You always put the one right in front of there. So I've done that here, right? Oh, where's my mouse? Oh, let's see. Hmm. Oh, sorry guys, my mouse isn't on. Here it is and now it is flipping through my slides. There it is. So 0 0.1 milligram per one ml equals 75 micrograms per X ml. What do you mean? You got micrograms and milligrams? Yes, we do. Okay, and I'm gonna show you how you're gonna do this. Now, I always wait to do my convergence at the very end because for me, it's easier to give my answer and then to do my convergence. Some people like to do their convergence at the beginning. It really doesn't matter um, as long as you get to the same answer. That's what I'm looking for, is for you to get to the same answer that I get to, which is always the correct answer, okay? So 0 0.1 milligrams divided by one or over one equals 75 micrograms over XML. The first step is going to be 75 times 1 equals 75, and then you're going to do 75 divided by 0 0.1, which is going to give you 750, okay? 750 is in milligrams, because that's where we are here. But we need to turn this into, uh, we need to actually convert it from micrograms to milligrams, okay? And so in order to do that, we are going to, I'm sorry, it's in micrograms. And so we need to convert it from micrograms to milligrams, right? Um, and here we are. Um, we are going to have 75 times 1 equals 75, and then 75 divided by 0 0.1 equals 750. You're going to take the 750 and you're going to divide that by 1,000. And we're dividing it by 1,000 because micrograms converted into milligrams must be divided. But if you're going from milligrams to micrograms, you're going to multiply, okay? Micrograms to milligrams divide by a thousand. Milligrams to micrograms multiply by a thousand, okay? Your answer is going to be C, 0 0.75. Um, a formula for a cough syrup contains one grain of codeine per fluid ounce. How many grains are contained in one tablespoon full? So you remember that one tablespoon is 15 ml. One grain is 30 ml, right? So we know that one tablespoon is going to be half of the, the grains, right? So we have here, um, not, not one grain, it's gonna be half of one fluid ounce. So one fluid ounce is, 30 ml, and then we have one tablespoon full, which is 15 ml. 15 is half of one fluid ounce, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is, the easy way to do this, you can set it up in a ratio, but I just prefer to just go straight across like this. Um, we're going to do 65 grains, or 65 milligrams, divided by two, okay? 
The two is going to be for the tablespoon full because tablespoon is 15 ml, one fluid ounce is 30, okay? So we're going to see, hmm, what is half of a grain? Half of a grain is 32.5, okay? Now our answer choice is in fractions. So we need to look at one of these, which one of these answer choices will actually give us 32.5. And the way that we do that is we do, well, I, what I did was I started with the first fraction. Now you can start with whatever fraction you want to start with, but I started with the first one and I said, okay, one half fraction, I have to turn it into a decimal. So one half comes out to be 0 0.5, right? Then I need to multiply that by 65 because that's my original number and I get 32.5. And that was actually my answer, okay? So again, we did 65 grains divided by two, and we did that because a table, tablespoonful is half of a fluid ounce, okay? Um, there, 15 can go into 30 twice, right? And then once we did that, we got 32.5, which was our answer, but we needed to find out what the answer was in fractions, okay? This was the easier way to do it for me. Um, and we did one half, which gives us 0 0.5, Multiply by 65, and that gave us 32.5, and our answer is A, okay? Um, the next one, converting grains. Now, you got to know that people ask for this, and so that's why we're showing it twice. Um, Nitrosat, 1 to 200 grain is equivalent to how many milligrams? Remember, we just told you that 1 grain is 65 milligrams right? So all you would have needed to do was to do 1 divided by 200 times 65, and you would have gotten 0 0.325. We don't see that on here. A lot of times in pharmacy, you won't always see your answer, which is why you need to make sure that you know how to round up or round down, okay? On this particular problem, we are rounding down because 0 0.325 with this 2 behind it means that we go down. So the answer is D. The answer is D. Okay, top 200 drug categories. Top 200 drug category. An automatic stop order in the institutional setting would apply to which drug category? Antidepressant, antipsychotic, antibiotic, or antihypertensive? When you look at this, I want you to think about which one of these drugs are not maintenance drugs. Lindsay, what is a maintenance drug? A maintenance drug is anything that helps a person to maintain perfect, perfect or good health, okay? So depression pills can help them to maintain and stabilize themselves. Antipsychotics can help to maintain and stabilize some things. Antihypertensive can help maintain and stabilize the blood pressure. But antibiotics are used to fight infections. They are not here to maintain anything. They're just used for a period of time to correct something, right? So the one that would have an automatic stop order would be antibiotics. Because at any given time, the doctor could say, at the end of their drug therapy, I want, them, I want the drug to automatically stop. And when they're in the hospital, that's how they're writing it, right? They're saying, Teresa is going to be on this drug for 10 days and then they are putting automatic stop. So that way the nurse station knows not to keep giving Teresa amoxicillin, okay? Bonus question. This is the last question of the lesson today. Again, I told you it was gonna be short. We have, I am, we are very time, uh, short on time and we I wanted to get this in. My team said, Lindsay, you're not gonna be able to do this for them. And I said, there's no way that I'm not gonna be here for you guys. I promise you all that I would be here. I promise you guys that I would help you get through this. And so I'm gonna keep my promise, okay? Um, and so tonight I wanted, or today, I wanted to make sure that I am here for you all to make sure that I keep our, our commitment in bringing you new content every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. If this video has helped you so far, like and subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. Ring the bell for notification. Drop a comment below and tell me what we're doing. Tell me what we're doing and what we're not doing. Okay? You keep commenting, you keep sharing your thoughts, and we'll keep growing to meet the needs of, of, your, of you and your friends, okay, and the community. Uh, the bonus question for tonight comes from non-steroid compounding. 
Which procedure would you not do when opening an ampule? Which procedure would you not do when opening an ampule? The key word is not. Some of y'all don't be paying attention to some key words. That's why y'all getting these answers wrong. You better make sure you're paying attention to these key words. The word is underlined. Pay attention. Okay. Um, would you wipe the neck with an alcohol pad? Would you not do? Would you wipe the alcohol pad, dry the neck with a paper towel, or break the ampule with alcohol pad covering the neck? Or would you filter the contents with a filtered needle upon, needle upon withdrawal? Which one would you not do? We would not wipe the alcohol or wipe the neck with the alcohol pad and then dry with a paper towel. That just defeated the purpose. You cleaned it and then you made it dirty again. So what you want to do is make sure you wipe the neck and when you break the ampule, you always break it away from your face. Okay, you never break the ampule up on your face. You always break it away from you and you use a alcohol pad to do that, okay? Um, if you are needing some help and you are like, you know what, Lindsay, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I got this test next week, or I got this test next month, or I got this test today, and I'm feeling some kind of way about it, give me a call, 903-295-5933, extension 101. Look, I know there are some people who are calling me just trying to see if I'm gonna answer the phone. I told you, I'm here for you. I'm going to answer the phone. I'm gonna answer the phone as much as I possibly can. Sometimes I'm in and out and you may get someone from our team that is going to answer the phone and talk to you, but remember that the message will be passed to me. If for any reason the phone rings and rings and rings and nobody answers, that number also receives text messages, 903-295-5933. Text us, we wanna hear your questions. We wanna be a part of your journey. We want to help you succeed on this test. We also want to help tutor you, okay? Um, you can also send me an email at info at lwpschool.com, info at lwpschool.com. I've gotten quite a few um, questions and emails about how to sign up for tutorials. I'm gonna drop that in the description this time so that way you guys know what to do and how you can move forward with your tutorial sessions. I'm gonna tell you what I always tell you. You're doing good. Keep studying. Keep thinking and pushing towards positivity. Block out every negative thing in your life right now. If, 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 if it's a spouse, if it's a loved one, if it's a, a friend, if it's a cousin, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's negative, right now you are in the prime of your life. You are in a place where you're doing something you've never done before. And so what you need is positivity surrounding you at all times. You need people who say, say, Lindsay, I believe in you. Who say, look, self, I believe in you, right? You don't need someone in here who's going to make you doubt everything about yourself. That's not what this is about. This is about making sure that you make it across that finish line, okay? So I want you to tune out every, every negative thing that's in your life right now and only focus on the positive. Another thing I'll tell you too is stop planning to fail. You guys are planning to fail this test and that is tricking you up. I had somebody call me and say, well, um, I'm gonna take my test in such and such, but if I don't pass, what can I do? Can we take the test first before we start talking about what happens if we don't do something? Jeez, your brain is hearing that. Like, you got to get a grip on yourself. Quit planning to fail. We plan to succeed. We plan to pass. We plan to become certified before the end of 2019. Friends, that's what we plan to do. We plan to make this thing work. Remember, this test is not against you. It's for you. It's with you to ensure the safety of pharmacy. This is an industry that requires you to be competent right? We want this industry to remain, to keep its integrity and to remain a safe place for everyone all over the country, all over the world. We want pharmacy to be the number one standard, right? And so because of that, we have to live it out as well. I have all, I enjoyed you guys. I always enjoy you. I always have a great time with you all every time we get together. Next Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we are getting together. We're going live. And I'm going to drop the link in the, in the description. If you want to go live and if you want to see me, like, and you want to make sure that we can get this thing jumping, make sure you join that live, okay? 
If you have any questions, make sure you drop them below. If you have watched me and I've helped you pass, drop a comment below and encourage the next person, okay? Until next time, it's always a pleasure. I wish you the very best. Sending you positivity and light. You're going to pass your test. Have a good one. I'll see you soon. Bye.